about the very challenging and difficult steiner lemis theorem. The steiner lemis theorem states that if a triangle has equal bisectors, then that triangle is isosceles. Now, this is one of a family of theorems that are about um, isosceles triangles. That we can prove isosceles from various features of Chebians. Um, another one is if a triangle has equal altitudes, that is, if two altitudes are equal in length, then the triangle is isosceles. That's pretty easy to prove. Another one is if, tri if two medians of a triangle are equal in length, then that triangle is isosceles. That also is pretty easy to prove. But the steiner lemis theorem, which states if two angle bisectors are equal, then the thing is isosceles, is surprisingly vexing. It's a lot more difficult than the others in this family. And um, so it's not exactly clear why. What we're going to do is we're going to show a sort of an altered version of the steiner lemis theorem, which I'll connect to the steiner lemis theorem in the end. We're going to show that if we have a triangle with unequal base angles, then the smaller base angle, when bisected, produces the larger or longer angle bisector. So we're going to use GeoGebra for presentation here. And let me illustrate how we're going to produce the angle bisectors. So I'm going to produce angle bisectors for, ang for the angle B and for the angle C. And then um, that's going to give us points uh, B and E on the triangle. And then uh, because I don't need the rest of these lines, I'm going to produce segments there. And then I'm going to hide the lines. OK, so now I have angle bisectors BE and BC in this picture. Um, now, here I've drawn the picture so that the angle at B uh, appears smaller than the angle at C. And so we're going to assume that B is the smaller base angle. And then the goal in this picture is to demonstrate that the length BE is longer than the length CB in this picture. So the smaller angle should have the longer angle bisector. And we're going to do something all, a little bit strange and surprising here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to construct a circle here. It's not obvious why we would need to think about circles. But we're going to construct a circle through B and D and C. So just focusing on the triangle BDC, we're going to construct the circumcircle. Now, I don't seem to have a circumcircle tool here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use the perpendicular bisector tool twice um, and then find the point of intersection of these two lines. And that will be the circumcenter. Having constructed the circumcenter, uh, then I will construct the circle, um, centered it there and through B. And notice, of course, it passes through D and passes through C, as it ought to, if it really is the circumcircle. Now I'm going to hide the auxiliary constructions uh, so that we just have that circle. Now, something you should notice right away about the circle is, of course, it passes through B and C and D. It was designed to. It was, after all, the circumcircle of the triangle BDC. Um, it does not pass through A. There is no reason why it should. It also doesn't pass through E. There is no reason why it should. Uh, that the the point E was not involved in the construction of that circle. But the relationship of this circle with E is actually um, kind of the point in this diagram. So what we're going to do next is we're going to identify this point along the segment BE, um, which lies on the circle. Now, um, so what are we going to do here? Um, with, we're gonna, basically, we're going to compare BG to BE. Now, while we're at it, let's construct this segment. Now, it's clear from our picture that G, that, that E lies outside the circle. But we shouldn't actually assume, until we know it for a fact, that E is outside the circle. Because there is an, another possibility that could have happened, right? You could imagine the circle arcing around this way and E lying inside the circle, which is contrary to our diagram, but not impossible, right? Conceivably, when we constructed the circle, E would lie inside it. And BE would appear shorter than BG. So our first concern here is, is BE truly necessarily longer than BG? Or is that just a coincidence of how the circle happened to land here? So um, in order to sort this out, let's think about some of these angles here. So the angle DBG, which is right there, angle DBG is equal to the angle uh, G, B, C, and that is half angle B, the original angle in that triangle. Why? Because we just bisected that angle. And if you bisect the angle, then you cut it into two equal parts, each half the original, right? Um, we can say the same thing happening at angle C. We can say angle B, C, D 
is equal to angle uh, DCA, uh, which is the same as DCE, right? Um, let me actually say DCE. Well, that's the original angle. Let's leave it this way, uh, which is half angle C. And furthermore, we know that angle B is smaller than angle C by assumption. Now, okay, that doesn't tell us anything about G, but there is something that we know about G. We know something about the relationship uh, between the, this angle at B and this angle at C. These, this angle at C, DG, uh, DCG, and this angle at B, DBG, both subtend the same chord of the circle. They're both inscribed angles, and that makes them equal. So DBG is equal to angle um, DCG um, because they're inscribed angles. Um, and they're both equal to, I said DBG is half B, right? And, they're, and half B is less than half C because B is less than C. And so what does that demonstrate? That demonstrates that we can trust something that we see as apparent in this picture. It, it, when we look at this picture, we can look at the angle D E, sorry, D C G, and we can see that's smaller than the angle D C E. But this tells us that um, we can we can trust that, right? So this demonstrates that angle D C G is truly less than angle D, C, E. And so E is, um, w well, so E is outside the circle. As the diagram shows clearly, but we've just proven that it has to be, right? Okay, so E lies outside the circle. And we can conclude from that that B, G is less than B, E. Now, that doesn't, that, so, I mean, it looks obvious in the picture. Of course, in the picture, we can see clearly that BG is less than BE, but this allows us to say that we have proven it. All right. So what else do we have in this picture? What else is going on here? Well, we have two angle bisectors, and they are CD, uh, represented here, and BE, represented here. Um, it will be easier to compare CD to BG first. So... Let's compare CD and BG. Now, it doesn't look like there's any obvious relationship between them because um, when we look at this one, CD, and this one, uh, B, BG, um, they're not part of a triangle together, and so there's no obvious connection between them. But they're both chords of a circle, and we've proven that among chords of a circle, the larger, the larger chords are subtended by the larger angles. So um, if, we have, uh, if we have a relationship between the angles, then we will have a relationship between the chords. Do we have a relationship between the angles? Well, let's look at, let's focus our attention on the chord CD. So uh, CD is subtended by angle B. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Uh, what about the other one? What about DG? Here, I think it's highlighting DE, but I mean, I'm sorry, I think it's highlighting BE, but I mean BG, okay? So BG here is a chord, and it is subtended by what angle? Um, angle BCG, but angle BCG is half B plus half C. Maybe it would be easier if I put it in the other order. It's, sub, it's equal to half angle C plus half angle B. Why? Because this lower portion of it is half of C. It's been bisected, so this is half of C. And this thing we've proven, DCG, is equal to half B. Um, so that's this thing is larger than that thing, right? So, so this angle, half C and half B, is larger than half B and half B because B is the smaller angle. And so if you compare all of B to this, this alternative, half C and half B, this is the larger. And that means that of the two chords, the larger one is BG. And so that tells us that CD is less than BG.
as it certainly appears to be in the picture, right? What we're saying here is that this length here is shorter than this length here. That's what we're proving. And it's on the basis of the angles that take the point, that take the point here. So, um, so, okay, so what? Well, CD is less than BG, but also BG is less than BE. So what do we conclude? We conclude that CE, CD is less than BE. And that is exactly what we were hoping to demonstrate, right? CD is the angle bisector of angle C, and BE is the angle bisector of angle B. And we're showing that the angle bisector for the larger angle, that is CD, is shorter than the angle bisector of the, the, the smaller angle, that is BE. So we've proven this claim, right? What I set out to show here, the, the smaller base angle has the longer bisector. This much we've proven. The smaller base angle being D has the longer bisector, namely BE. Okay, so that's proven. Now, what we haven't done is we haven't discussed the steiner lamus theorem. So let's remind ourselves what the steiner lamus theorem is about. It, the steiner lamus theorem is not about smaller angles having or unequal angles and unequal bisectors. The steiner lamus theorem is about equal bisectors implies isosceles. Well, um, so now that we've proven this claim, uh, let's use it to support the steiner lamus theorem. Supposing you have a triangle with equal angle bisectors, how could the base angles be unequal? If they were unequal one way, so if they were unequal one way, then we would have the corresponding inequality of the angle bisectors one way, right? As, as is illustrated this way. If they were unequal the other way, then we would have a corresponding inequality of the angle bisectors in the other way. So this tells us that what, what we've proven here tells us no matter how the base angles should happen to be unequal, we would, we would therefore have an inequality of the angle bisectors. So if it turns out the angle bisectors are equal, the only way that could possibly happen is if the base angles themselves are equal. And so I'll write that down just so we have some words to it. Um, so if the angle bisectors are equal, sorry, if the, if the angles are equal, if the base angles are equal, uh, sorry, <laughs> no, I stated it wrong. If the angle bisectors are equal, um, any inequality of base angles would force the angle bisectors to be unequal. And so we have no choice but to conclude then, um, then the, the, the base angles have no choice but to be equal. So the triangle is isosceles. And that proves the Steiner-Lemmis theorem. 